Hey everyone, it's Sarah's Registered Nurse RN.com, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the rights of medication administration. And whenever you get done watching this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this content. So let's get started. The purpose of the rights of medication administration is to help prevent medication errors. Now, as a nurse, we are the last safety net in medication administration because most of the time we are the ones who give the patient the medication. So we always want to double check or even triple check the medication that we are giving the patient by following these rights. Now these rights are very helpful and as a nurse I have actually caught many medication errors by just following these rights of medication administration. For instance, I have found a medication that was ordered on a patient, the pharmacy put in the wrong dose or the wrong frequency or a physician had accidentally put in a medication order on a patient that was meant for another patient. And I simply just looked at that medication and I was like, why is this patient being ordered this medication? So I was following the right reason. Turns out it wasn't even for that patient. Also, whenever I've went to remove medications from like a system that was created to help prevent medication errors, the PIXA system, it actually dispensed me with the wrong medication. And what had happened was that the medication it had dispensed me with had a very similar name to another drug. So whoever had stalked the system had accidentally put in the wrong medication. So errors do happen. Um, even in today, whenever we have all this technology that's supposed to assist us with medication administration. So we always wanna make sure that we stick to the basics and we follow these rights. Now the rights of medication administration have really evolved over over the years. We have the five basic rights that really lay that foundation for what we need to know whenever we're administering medications. But there's other rights that have been added on over the years just to help increase our safety checks whenever we are giving a patient a medication. So you may have heard of the seven rights, the nine rights, the 10 rights, and etc. So what I want to do is I'm going to cover the five basic ones which help lay our foundation for medication administration. And then I want to talk about the other ones that have been added on over the years. So the first right we have is called the right patient. And as a nurse, we want to make sure that we have the right patient for this medication. Because sometimes on a unit, you're going to have a set of patients that have the same first name or the same last name or even the same first and last name. And you want to ensure that this medication that you're giving the patient is for the right person. So to do that, we're going to perform some safety checks. And we want to use at least two patient identifiers. So you could ask the patient to state their first and last name along with their date of birth and take that information that they've given you and compare that to their arm identification band that they're wearing. And then take it a step further and look in that medication administration record, the MAR, and see if that information matches up. Next is the second right, which is right medication. Now, whenever you're performing your safety checks for this right, you wanna look at that order and you wanna pay close attention to that medication name that was ordered and compare that to what you have on hand, what you've been dispensed with. And look at that name from beginning to end very carefully and analyze it and make sure it matches. And the reason I really stress that is because there are medications out there that have very similar looking names. And if you take like a quick glance at it, you may miss the difference and think it is that medication. For instance, look at these two drug names. We have acetazolamide, which is a diuretic, and then we have acetohexamide, which helps treat diabetes and lower the blood glucose. Now, if you just quickly glance at these medications, you may miss the difference and think it is that medication that was ordered. Now, furthermore, what you wanna do whenever you're going over this right medication is that you want to make sure that that medication you're giving isn't expired, that it's within date, that it hasn't been damaged, tampered with, or anything like that. It's good to go and give to the patient. And you just want to look at the patient's allergies and just ask them what they're allergic to just to confirm that. And even take it a step further and ask them, you know, I'm giving you this. Have you ever had this medication in the past? If it's not one of their home medications that they take regularly and ask them if they have, well, did you do okay with it? Did you tolerate it okay? Because that can help tip you off as a nurse you know, 
I need to be watching out for some potential side effects that could happen that they may have had in the past. The next right is the right dose. So just like before with the right medication, you're gonna look at that order and you're particularly paying attention to the dose that was ordered. And you're gonna compare that with what you plan on giving. Is this the right dose? And many times you're not gonna be dispensed with the right dose. You're either gonna have to take the medication and split that pill in order to equal what was ordered or you're gonna have a vial of medication and you only need to give one meal. It may have five, but you only need to withdraw one meal. Or you may have a drip hanging and let's say it's a heparin drip and the PTT is a certain level and you have to titrate that drip. So you're gonna to have to do some math in order to determine based on that patient's weight with their PTT level with what you're supposed to set the rate at. So you'll have to do some math. So you definitely want to double check your math and you wanna get another nurse to verify. With some medications, that's an automatic thing. You have to get another nurse to sign off on what you have calculated. But if you're ever unsure, it just only takes a second. Just find another nurse, have them double check your math. Then we have the fourth right, which is the right route. So with this, again, look at that order, but this time pay close attention to the way that this medication needs to be administered, so the route. Now today we can get medications various ways. Um, most common way, of course, is through the mouth, but we can also give them IV intravenous. We can give them sub Q in the fatty tissue of the skin, in the muscle, IM, topically, etc. So you wanna make sure that you have the right supplies for the way that you have to give this medication. For instance, if a patient's getting something through the mouth. Let's say they're getting a pill. You wanna confirm that this patient can swallow properly. You wanna make sure that they have something to take the medication with. And if they can't swallow, what do you do? Well, can the, can the patient take the medication in a pudding or an applesauce? Or can the medication be crushed and you give it to them that way? So you wanna confirm if you can indeed crush it and they can swallow. Or let's say you're giving it IV. Well, you wanna make sure your IV access works because sometimes they don't work and you gotta start a new one. So you wanna flush it beforehand to confirm that, give the medication and then flush it again to make sure you've flushed it through. Or if you're giving this IM, you wanna make sure that you're selecting the appropriate size muscle for this drug and that you have got the right size needle for that muscle. Or if you're giving it topically on the skin, you wanna look at where the previous topical application was, if the patient's getting this routinely, you wanna make sure that you remove that, clean that area, and then switch where you put this. So you always wanna make sure that you are just being prepared with the route that you are giving this medication. And then next we have the fifth right, which is the right time and the right frequency. So with this, before you even give that medication, look in that MAR, that medication administration record, and see when this was last given, especially if you're giving a PRN medication, one of those as needed medications and make sure that the frequency that the patient is receiving this medication matches up with that original order. So make sure that the medications do, you're not giving it too late or too soon and pay close attention to those time critical medications like antibiotics, anticoagulants, um, insulin, etc because it's very important at the times you give those. So review the policy at your hospital that you're working because they're gonna outline those time frames when you can give medications, when they're not too late or too soon, and these time critical medications. Now let's talk about some more rights of medication administration that goes beyond those five basic rights that I just covered. These are also things that you wanna do during medication administration to ensure patient safety, but to also guide you through throughout the process. Okay, so we have the right reason. This means whenever you look at the medication name as you're giving meds, you wanna be asking yourself, okay, why is this ordered? So think back to pharmacology. Think, okay, what does this medication do? Um, how does it work in the body? What am I monitoring for? And um, what could this be treating in the patient? A lot of times it's gonna be something that's in the patient's health history. So they come to the hospital, they have a history of diabetes, so you're giving them these medications. Or there's something currently going on with the patient and they need this medication to treat what's going on with them. So for instance, 
you have a patient, they came to you, they are in right-sided heart failure, and they have fluid throughout their body. They're in fluid volume overload. They have three plus pitting edema. They can barely breathe because they have so much fluid in their lungs. You hear crackles throughout. So the physician orders IV furosemide Lasix. So as a nurse, you're gonna say, okay, right reason. What am I thinking? Okay. We know that this is a loop diuretic. How it's gonna work is it's gonna remove all this extra fluid that's hanging out in this patient's body into the urinary system. So they're gonna be voiding a lot. So I need to make sure that they can get to the bathroom easily and they have access to it and let them know that this is going to be occurring, it's normal. And I wanna make sure that we're not dehydrating them, like removing too much fluid. So we wanna be looking at their vital signs, like their blood pressure, their heart rate. And we want to make sure that we're not wasting too much potassium because we know that loop diuretics waste potassium. So physicians are going to be ordering routine labs on these patients and your job is to look at those lab results as they come in and make sure they're within normal limits. So before you give them their next dose of Lasix, make sure that their potassium is in normal limits. Um, a lot of times they're gonna be taking some more potassium uh, like potassium supplements, but we want to make sure it's good enough because we don't want to make their potassium level just sink too low. And a normal potassium is about 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents per liter. And then we have the right assessment. Okay, so before you give any medications, you you look at the medications with the right reason, but you also want to ask yourself, okay, what information do I need to know before I actually give this patient this med? Because you don't want to give them this medication and be like, oh no, um, I shouldn't have gave them this because this isn't good. So let me give you an example. Your patient's taking a beta, blo a beta blocker. This helps, um, this will slow down the heart rate. So you want to make sure before you give them this beta blocker that their heart rate was in within normal limits before you actually gave it to them. So make sure they're not experiencing severe bradycardia. Or let's say your patient is due to get some warfarin, which is an anticoagulant, Coumadin. You want to make sure that you looked at their latest INR result. Make sure it's within parameters of where that physician wants them to be. And if it is, you can administer it. If not, you need to notify the physician. Then next, you would want to make sure you're giving the right education to the patient. So this is a great time during whenever you are giving medications to be educating your patient about these drugs routinely instead of just throwing this all on them at discharge because it can be very overwhelming. So you want to go over the name of the medication you're giving the patient, um, the generic name and the brand name as well. Uh, the frequency, how many times a day they've been getting this, uh, if they are gonna go home on it, how many times they would be taking it, the times you've been giving it there, why they're taking it, what's the purpose of this, what is this treating, the dose that they're taking, and what is normal versus abnormal? Like, what should they uh, be monitoring themselves for? Like, common side effects versus this is not good, you need to report this to your physician. And how to administer it. Let's say that they're gonna be going home on Lovenox, anoxaparin. So you wanna make sure that you have demonstrated to them how to administer that and you watch them do that. So they'll be prepared whenever they go home to take these medications. And the next we have the right documentation. So this is when we will document the information that is needed for whenever we are giving medications. And this is going to be after administration. And remember to always document because there's a saying that says, if you didn't chart it, you didn't do it. It because if no one can see it, there's no way to tell that you had done it, even though you did do it. And documenting is a great communication tool for other people who are gonna be taking care of that patient. For instance, let's say the other shift's coming on and or the patient's being transferred to another unit or the patient's going home. This communicates to the other nurse what medications the patient's been taking, and the last dose. And this is really important, let's say, for those PRN medications. A uh, patient needs some pain medication. Well, the nurse can look back at your documentation and see when you gave it last, and is it due? Can they have it again? So whenever you are documenting some things you definitely want to include, you want to include the name of the medication you gave, the dose, the time you gave it, the route you gave it, the site, let's say it's one of those medications like a fentanyl patch. Um, and you put it on the right side of the body, let's say the right arm or something like that. That tells the nurse who has to administer the next fentanyl patch where to go to remove the previous fentanyl patch. 
so she can remove that and then apply the new one. So that's very helpful. And any data that needs to be recorded whenever you are giving a medication, like any lab levels, and we talked about that over here, any vital signs. Uh, if the patient's um, having pain medication, you need to know uh, the patient's description, like words they're using to describe it. Is it throbbing, stinging, cramping? Uh, the location of the pain, their pain rating on a scale one to 10 and follow up with uh, like that pain rating. Let's say you gave them some morphine. Well, you're going back to evaluate it. Did the morphine help and see what their pain rating decreased to? Then we have the right to refuse. So patients always have the ability to tell you that I don't want this medication. So if you are facing that with a patient, just make sure you have taken the time to educate them about why this medication is um, prescribed and ask them why they don't wanna take it, investigate it because it may be really simple and maybe they just didn't know something about this particular medication and you just can explain that to them and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I understand now, I'll take it. But whatever the reason is, always make sure you document this thoroughly and communicate it to the, the prescribing physician if the patient does refuse to take it. And then lastly, we have the right evaluation. So as the nurse, you're definitely going to want to make sure that this medication is having the right effect on this patient. So again, this really, you can go back to the right reason. Whenever you're thinking of the right reason of the medication, you're thinking, okay, how this medication works on the body, what it's going to do. And this is gonna help you with your right evaluation. So example, let's say your patient had uncontrollable atrial fibrillation. So you had to start them on a cardizem drip. What is the right evaluation of this drug? How as a nurse do you expect this drug to be working for this patient? Well, it should be slowing down that ray. It should start controlling that atrial fibrillation and it could even help get them back to normal sinus rhythm. So you'll be looking at their heart, heart rate, their rhythm on that cardiac monitor. You're also going to be making sure we're getting the right effect on their blood pressure. So make sure their blood pressure is within normal limits. So that helps guide us with that. Now don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this material. And thank you so much for watching.